So it opened up with Punk coming out, and of course he gets a gigantic reaction here in, in Chicago. He's interrupted by Paul Heyman, and they initially start out with like Paul getting a hug and and uh, said, man, I needed that. This is your town. But he says, is really pissed off Solo Sokoa, and he says, uh, I want to tell you, do me a favor, uh, let me know. Or he says, I need to let you know that you need to get the hell out of here right now. So Punk says, are you serious? You want me to leave because Solo and some Tongans are going to try and jump me in Chicago? So Solo's music hits. He comes out with the Tongans, and he says, Punk, if uh, you want to be on SmackDown on this show in this city, you can either pay your respect to me in the bloodline or get your ass kicked. So Punk says, Paul, what's the favor that you want me to do for you if I do you this favor? And Paul says, take me with you. And Paul or Punk says, Solo, I acknowledge I don't see the bloodline standing in front of me. I see a bunch of fake-ass Usos. So Solo goes to beat his ass. He sends Tonga and Tonga to the ring. Cody hits the ring, throws a bat to CM Punk. The heels bail. And then Cody challenges Solo for the main event. Which, as you noted in The Observer, is probably going to be the main event at SummerSlam. It is the planned main event at SummerSlam, yeah. They better give Solo a lot between now and then. Because, like, he always loses the big matches. Yeah, yeah, but he's he's the focal point. He's the top heel in the company right now. Well, he needs to beat some guys. Bianca met with Jade backstage, and they talked about qualifying for Money in the Bank, and and uh, Jade says, I'm not going to distract you, but after this is over, we got to talk to uh, Nick about getting a rematch for the tag team titles. Cody runs into Kevin Owens and Randy backstage, and Randy says, I hear you want to face Solo alone in the main event. Cody says, I got this. Trust me. Kevin says, I don't like this. And so Cody says, I've got a plan. So this was interesting. We had Bianca, Meechin, and Chelsea in a Money in the Bank qualifier. And later, we had Carmelo, Randy Orton, and Tamatanga in a Money in the Bank qualifier. And both of them had the big upset finish. In Mm -hmm. the women's match, Chelsea stole a pin and ended up qualifying. And uh, so Bianca, like she's out. And in the men's match, we had Carmelo Hayes ended up stealing a pin over Randy Orton. And so Randy is out. So Carmelo qualifies. And what was interesting is Carmelo and Chelsea are both heels. And they both got cheered like crazy. No, Chelsea Chelsea got got cheered like, I mean, this was like a big time PLE main event title change. This pop she got... They yep. counted along so loud, and Bianca was the one who would hit her move, and Bianca's a huge baby face. When Chelsea threw Bianca out of the ring and made the cover, this place lost it. Yep. So they go absolutely nuts. Chelsea is qualified. But then later in the uh, the Carmelo match, they did not react like that because they loved Randy Orton. And so uh, it got a reaction when he still Carmelo got, got, he the, still got He still got cheered. Yeah, but it was nothing like Chelsea's. No, no, no. That Chelsea's Chelsea insane. reaction was insane. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I know. Bailey's shown walking and Blair Davenport walks up and uh, says, tell Naomi I'm looking forward to facing her in a qualifier next week and I look forward to cashing in on you, Bailey. We had solo backstage with Paul and he says, you still want me to leave? And Paul says, no. And Solo says, well, before you leave, I want you to tell the Tongans. And then I don't know what he said because the mic died. But Paul says, I'll go do it right now. And Solo says, when you come back, me and you, we got to have a talk. Even though they were having a talk. Grayson Waller did a promo about his qualifying match. He says, I'm at, uh, he says Theory's at home recovering. So he's going to vow to win the briefcase for him. And then DIY shows up and... They're kind of having an argument, and all of a sudden, this big bay door is behind him. And you hear this bang, bang, bang. And the door opens, and CM Punk is dead on the ground. He's covered in blood, and standing over him is Drew McIntyre. And Drew picks him up, and this was the long, uninterrupted shot of the night. He picks this guy up, and he carries him all the way through the backstage area, all the way through the gorilla position, all the way through the curtain, all the way out on the ramp, and he just drops him, puts his near knee across him, tears off his charm bracelet, puts it in his pocket, and Nick Aldis storms out, and he's screaming at Drew McIntyre. They end up putting Punk in a neck brace. They stretcher him out. 
So I don't know if he's got like like a longer way to go on his recovery. Than well, they don't know. They, 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 they um, I mean, it's t- it's touch and go about SummerSlam. They're hoping for SummerSlam, but so hence his it, angle. Yeah, yeah. So it just it buys him more time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like like the hope is he's ready for SummerSlam. It was not like a sure thing. Um, but you know, I mean, that's the big show. That's what they. That's that's where they want it. So we had the Carmelo, Randy Orton, Tamatanga match. The thing about this show, besides that, it was just a great show. Was this crowd was awesome? I mean, you know, they it's, were it's, so hot for it, this match. It's 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 Chicago. It's one of their best crowd. I mean, it's Chicago's one of the best cities for for crowd reactions. So Randy ends up tossing Tama outside. Carmelo rolls him up for the pin. The Tongans had come down to interfere. So uh, I'm sure Randy is going to be. Uh, I guess facing Tongaloa or something at some point here. Well, it's, he's going to go some, through the. Uh, well, I mean, I figure it's Randy and um, Kevin Owens against um, Tama Tonga and Tong- Tongaloa at some yep. point. Yeah. But well, but I think that they'll be doing um, the six man with Cody and Solo added in probably at some point on SmackDown as well. We got the White Six recap, and then LA Knight comes out for the promo, also gets a gigantic reaction. He wants Logan Paul, but Logan Paul doesn't come out. So Knight starts burying him, calling him a limber tail, no show Chicago. And they're going to have a match at Madison Square Garden, or he's going to have a match with Santos Escobar. So Santos ends up coming out, and LA is just belittling him. I didn't ask for you. He goes, Yeah, I'm looking past you to this, this ladder match. And he says, uh, or Santos says, Next week, you're not just dealing with Logan Paul, you're dealing with me. You better remember that. And LA said, Every time I've had to beat you, I did. So I'm not looking at you, I'm looking past you. So Santos attacks him. He beats his ass. Uh, L.A. makes a comeback, hits the BFT, and then Logan Paul hits the ring, jumps L.A. from behind, gives him the big KO punch, leaves him for dead. So my guess is actually that Santos is probably winning that match next week. And then Logan Paul and and uh, and uh, L.A. LA move beat, on to their they, feud. They beat each other. Yeah, yeah. Kevin Owens, Grace Waller, Andrade, Money in the Bank qualifier. That, that ended up being a pretty good match. Yeah, this finish was awesome. So Owens is just selling his knee the entire time, and well, he got jumped. He got jumped before the match. Yep. So he's trying all of his moves. Tries to pop up power bomb. The knee gives out. Manages it the stunner, but Waller pulls him out of the ring. So Waller goes to do his dive roll from the outside in. Think you think it's going to be the finish? Yep. And he dives in. He jumps, and Andrade turns it into his neck breaker. Pins him clean in the middle. Awesome finish. Yeah, really well done. So Andrade. Really, good, really, really. Short match, but really good. Yep. Andrade moves on to the money in the bank. They said that Punk was having to stay overnight in the hospital. Drew said he would see us on Monday. So he's going to be on Raw. He's missed no shows since quitting, including shows he's not on. Mm. Paul met with uh, Solo. He says, I told the Tongans to do what you asked. And he says, listen, you're breaking commandments. There's several things that Roman said to me before he left. He said, CM Punk, supposed to be hands off. And he says, Cody, not something you're supposed to handle solo. And Roman, you just wanted Cody to be in check. So when he comes back and all of a sudden Solo stops him and he says, I hate to be the one to tell you this because I love you. But Roman, he's not coming back. And Paul's aghast. And Solo goes through the curtain for his match. So the main event is Cody Rhodes and Solo. So, so I wonder how, how soon before he comes back. I mean, I figured, you know, he's going to be out for a while. I, I could see him coming back like SummerSlam, you know. I could see him being doing a return at the end of the summer at the end of the SummerSlam match. Yeah, I could see that. But I, yeah. I think I think they're building. This I don't. Up I don't know. To, but it's, I mean, the longer they keep him out, the more over he's going to be. I yeah. mean, the crowd's chanting, you know, we want Roman every week. Yeah. So yeah, main events Cody and, and Solo. So at first nobody's at ringside, and then Cody's running wild like two minutes in. He's setting up for the crossroads. Tongans hit the ring. Randy's music hits. Owen comes out. Owens is limping the entire time. Orton hits Tama with the RKO, and the three of them surround Solo, and he's begging off in the corner. They're going to kill him three on one. And all of a sudden, Jacob Fatu hits the ring, and man, this guy can move. And he's he great. Kill he's, these guys. He's he he he's he's really talented. He super kicked the hell out of everybody. Samoan drop on the steps to Kevin Owens. He sprinted around the ring and speared Orton through the barricade. Cody makes a brief comeback, but Fat Two gives him the Urnagi on the apron, 
And then he puts Cody on the table. He climbs up on the post, gives him the big splash off the post through the table. Crowd chants, holy shit. This was one of the best WWE debuts in a long time. Oh, yeah. Excellent. Excellent. So. Yeah. So this was this was great. I, I mean, Solo's just... I mean, this match only went three minutes, but he got no offense in. Cody just destroyed him the entire well, match. Well, of course, because it's to set up Jacob. I know, but if Solo's actually challenging for the title doesn't, at SummerSlam... Doesn't, doesn't matter. It's, it's like you got to make him something... They got how many weeks? They got they got they got um, they've got a month to do that. They will okay. do they will they will do that you know over and over and over again, probably to the point of ridiculousness. I mean, that's they're, they're going to do that. Cody's the champion. They're going to do that. All right. Well. So yeah, that was the uh, SmackDown show. It was uh, great. One of the best SmackDowns of the year. Awesome debut. So uh, if you've got it on your DVR, I would recommend going to watch it because it was a very, very good show. Why don't we start reading some questions <laughs> and we'll see if we can spur some answers out of Granny. Shall we try? I don't think so. Let's try. <laughs> then, then you'll really find out how dumb I am. Granny, did you know there was a resting bear? Uh, no, <laughs> and I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's a bear that wrestled... People. I still don't care. Okay. What is your favorite breakfast cereal of all time? What's your favorite cereal, Granny? You know what cereal is? I can't eat it. Fruit Islands, S'mores Crunch, Rocky Road, Original Recipe, Cookie Crisp, and of course all the video game inspired cereals like Super Mario and, and Donkey Kong, and there was a Nerds cereal, cereal that tasted like candy. There's two bags inside the box, and one was grape and one was cherry. Oh, it was oh. great. Dunkin' Donuts had an excellent cereal for a while. These are all gone. These are all gone. What is your least favorite pizza brand? Little Caesars. The answer is Little like Caesars. It. There used to be a great, great pizza throughout the Northwest called Pietro's Pizza. Every memory of yours is about something from the deep past that your sad is no longer around. Yeah. I yeah, they could be my favorite food. Just go to Mod Pizza and love it. This sounds good. Is Granny frozen? Granny, you frozen? No, I'm ready to read my report. Your picture is frozen. It is? Yeah. Or you're doing a great job as a ventriloquist. Hey, guys, did you love this clip? If so, you should join our channel. Just hit the Join button, and you'll have full access to every single show that we do. Wrestling Observer Live, Wrestling Observer Radio, The Brian and Vinny Show. All of them in full HD, full length, plus archives of all of your favorite shows. Click Join today and don't miss out.